Imagine you're applying for a job. You'd never send this. But this, this is so much better. But if the words are the same, why is their meaning totally different? That's because throughout history, typography has done more than just share information. It's helped show it. From representing different national identities, political and cultural movements, to even trends, the history of typography is more than a story about technology. It's about the power of design to communicate. Typography comes from the ancient Greek words for impression and writing, meaning that cuneiforms, one of the earliest systems of writing invented, could be considered an example of typography, just like the ceramic movable type invented in China during the 11th century. But when most of us imagine typography, we picture this man. In 1440, Johannes Gutenberg introduced Europe to the printing press and movable type, launching print and typography as we think of it today. These first printed books used fraktur, a type of black letter modeled after a style of lettering used by scribes across Europe. With thick vertical lines and thin diagonal connectors, it was easy to consistently reproduce by hand, making its popularity a question of practicality. Carried into print, that practical need for rigid, fractured lines disappeared, but fracture was more than a typeface. It was a design convention, what people expected writing to look like. With the rediscovery of Latin texts that used a calligraphy style developed during the reign of Holy Roman Emperor Charlemagne, and also influenced by inscriptions on monuments like Trajan's Column in Rome, Renaissance scholars began developing Roman-style type, inspired by classical forms which used straight lines and regular curves. Today, most major Western typefaces, from Garamond to Times New Roman, are derived from this style. Just like Fraktur had spread across Europe, so did Roman. But while its readability made it popular, its origins made it polarizing. Before German unification in the 19th century, language, rather than nationality, represented Germanic identity. And writing in Fraktur was part of that. Protestant Martin Luther saw Roman type as an extension of the Catholic Church, and later, Otto von Bismarck would refuse to read German texts that weren't in German type. When Roman was used, it was in a mixed type style, applied to non-German names or places as symbols of otherness. That continued into the 20th century, with Fraktur featuring heavily in Nazi propaganda. The meaning of other types would also shift over the centuries. Italics, which we now use to add emphasis, were first invented to mimic handwriting, as well as fit more letters on a page, saving printing costs. Wingdings, which we now associate with cryptic, random, and often not particularly useful iconography, are a typeface based on ding bats, metal pieces of type used to mimic the decorative embellishments of manuscripts. Many of the fonts we take for granted today weren't just popularized by the printing press. English typecutter William Caslon's work was spread throughout the British Empire and can be found in most printings made by American founding father Benjamin Franklin, reflecting how type, just as much as language, was another colonial export. At the end of the 18th century, the Industrial Revolution brought the invention of the paper-making machine and steam-powered printing press. Society was shifting, cities were booming, and advertisers were clamoring to attract the attention and money of the masses. Colorful and creative fonts in newspapers, billboards, and advertisements transformed typography into the powerful marketing tool it continues to be today. In the early 19th century, the first sans serif Latin typeface debuted, shaving off the serifs to create a more commercially useful font that worked well in large sizes. Serifs and sans serifs now represent two primary categories in typography, and the meanings we associate with them has as much to do with their history as with their look. 
Serifs, those little feet along the edges of a letter, are copied from the Roman inscriptions that first inspired Renaissance scholars, a stylistic tradition that's existed for millennia. So in contrast, the more recently invented sans serifs, with their clean edges and even strokes, evoke simplicity and modernity. Beyond societal shifts, typography also reflected trends, like during the Egyptomania craze of the 19th century, when the first Egyptian slab serif was given that name, not because of its design, but as a clever marketing ploy. Later movements like Bauhaus, among others, would also reflect their aesthetics through new forms of typography. Like all trends, the pendulum eventually swung back, rejecting the wild typefaces of the 19th century in favor of simpler shapes. During that time, in 1957, Helvetica, a modern-looking sans serif and one of the world's most popular fonts, was born. Nostalgia and experimentation filled the advertisements, posters, and signage of the 20th century with different styles of typography, cementing the associations that certain fonts carry in popular culture, like how this type has become a shorthand for horror. The next evolution in typography came in the 1960s with the advent of digital type and early bitmap fonts, built with bulky pixels. As tech advanced, so did type, with designers taking inspiration from the past while also adapting to the new needs of digital platforms. Today, making a new typeface is easier than ever, and it's a design and branding element that companies consider right alongside their logos and corporate colors. Because throughout its history, type has been used to communicate more than just the words it spells out. After all, Roman, one of the most common types we use, was pulled from ancient engravings, reimagined in the Renaissance by scholars who wanted to align themselves with the great empire, became a symbol of Catholicism, was used as a tool to civilize the colonies, and has been stretched, distorted, and used in countless formats, only to end up as your computer's default font. <laughs>